downstream of the Colorado River. So we cannot see Lake Powell yet. It is definitely uh, further downstream, but how much further I am not sure. But you can see the amount of cutting the river has done so far. Another good example of what we're looking at here, there's the launch ramp. You can see here ancient ripple marks of the Moenkopi Formation. These ripple marks were created in tidal flats. You can see over here this shelf of sediment. So this is actually where the river and lake used to be in 2019. The river has cut down at least 40 feet from the last time I was here. It is creating a new channel through all of this sediment deposits that Lake Powell has dropped. You can see a road over there where people used to access the lake and river to launch their boat, but I don't think you could do that anymore. So this is where the former marina used to be. So um, this was taken out in 2002. So Height was named after a prospector. His name was Cass Height. He came out here in like 1883 and set up for uh, a gold prospecting gig. Um, so yeah, he was able to get a lot of people to come out here and uh, mine for gold, but they soon realized it's kind of a dead effort. The gold is too fine to be uh, extracted from the soil. So they set up a ferry called Dandy Crossing as well. And that was the only ferry between Lee's Ferry and Moab. So this was kind of a very important spot to get transportation in across the river. 
So a little bit later, after World War II, they actually did a uranium uh, mining operation out here. They actually had a mill five miles downriver, I believe uh, near White Canyon. So they actually set up a uh, um, full mill, post office. Yeah, it got like a, another population boom out here. So uh, interesting to think about. But yeah, so there used to be a uranium mill right over there across the bay. Store closed and gas station closed. Pump is turned off, so the only place to get gas would be Hanksville or Blanding. You can see I'm over here in an area where there's a stagnant pool of water. This is remnants of Lake Powell. So when Lake Powell was at a, a certain elevation, it was actually uh, feeding this little area here. And uh, since the lake has uh, receded, um, you can see that there is a pool of water, a little bit fed by this creek here, but majority of that's from Lake Powell. This is called North Wash. Um, it's this nice area that's back in the corner a little bit from one of the viewpoints. Um, back behind there is the boat ramp. You can't see it from here, but it definitely is over there. Then a little bit more straight ahead, that is actually the former marina site. Back in 2002, the National Park Service had to dismantle the marina and uh, ship it down towards Bullfrog and Hall's Crossing on a ferry. Um, it hasn't returned since, so it's about 21 years now that uh, Height hasn't had a marina. And a little bit to our right is an area that used to be called Crescent City. That's the site. Um, kind of like where that pool of water meets land, um, but it's definitely been inundated by sediment build up from uh, Lake Powell. So uh, I'm not too familiar on Crescent City. I assume it was a gold mining camp for the prospectors that came through with Cass Height back in the day. Um, so yeah, nice little spot over here. There's the bridge crossing the Colorado River, and that is the Colorado River below. Now this should be self-explanatory. So that's looking upriver. That's looking towards Narrow Canyon. Then there's a, a cutoff point between Narrow Canyon and Cataract. It's called um, Millie Crag Bend. So after that bend, Cataract Canyon begins, which it's the same canyon, but we have different names for them. Different characteristics. Excuse me if I pronounce that right. So a little backstory here. John Wesley Powell pioneered through here. He was the first white explorer to come through the Colorado River from end to end. He started in Green River, Wyoming. That trip started in May 24th, 1869 at Green River, Wyoming. So he finally made it down here on July 28th, 1869. So they arrived uh, through Narrow Canyon here, went all the way down the river, and inevitably made it to Glen Canyon, which is further downstream.
You dirty devil, you. So we're looking at the Dirty Devil Bridge right there, right over the Dirty Devil River. And it's uh, flowing quite nice. You know, it's been a very generous winter and a uh, majority of the streams in Southern Utah and Northern Arizona are flowing well. So a little background on the Dirty Devil River. Um, it was named by uh, one of John Wesley Powell's uh, crew members with his famous uh, expedition uh, down the Colorado River. So they arrived uh, here in this area, which was not named Height at the time, but they arrived through uh, Cataract Canyon. Um, so that was on July 28th. Um, they arrived to the Dirty Devil River and uh, it's actually named for the muddy and unpleasant smell. So the person who named it was uh, one of the crew members, uh, William H. Dunn. He was the uh, Colorado trapper and hunter. This is the Fry Canyon Bridge and below is Fry Canyon. I honestly don't know too much about Fry Canyon or uh, its history regarding uh, people of the past. So we'll go from left to right. Ellsworth, right there on the left. Holmes, second. Third is going to be Mount Pennell. And fourth is going to be Mount Ellen. So the Colorado Plateau has a long history of uranium mining. Um, a lot of places are Monument Valley, um, Navajo Nation, then also near Moab. Um, so near the Henry Mountains, there was actually a, a decent amount of mining back in the day. Um, this is the uh, Shooterine Canyon Uranium Mill. So this is where they would take the raw ore and uh, turn it into more of a uh, fine product such as yellow cake. Um, this was built in 1980, a little bit after the uranium rush ended. Um, they commenced operations in 82 and operated only for six months, believe it or not. It ceased operations due to depressed price of uranium. Now this is owned and operated by Anfield Energy. They actually bought it back in 2015 from Uranium One. Now Uranium One owns a mill uh, on White Mesa near Blanding, Utah, and that's one of the only operational mills. This mill is on standby. So I'm back over here by the Bears Ears, but uh, I'm out of height. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, Heights one of my favorite places, the views you can't beat and also the solitude is really nice. Definitely, definitely uh, recommend it if you've never been there. But everybody have a good day. We'll see you later.